I'm James Keating, the Knife Coach. We're here to talk about the Knife Coach article number two, which is called Counter Knife. If you make a poison, it's only logical to make an antidote for that poison. So in case you're hit with that poison, you'll live. So whatever you create, you create a counter for. So this is what we're speaking about, is sometimes you're on the receiving end of the blade and you need to be able to do either a counter knife move or counter for counter knife move, depending upon the sequence of timing that you find yourself caught in. So we're going to show you some of the basic ideas real quick so that you, when you've read this article, you'll then be able to relate to this short video and see exactly what I was talking about in essence and then use that as groundwork to build upon and learn from and discover other things. That's the idea. So we're just providing you fertile ground, putting the seed in that ground. You're going to have to water it and make it grow from there in order for it to be anything more than the, the limited time that I'm showing you here, the limited stuff. So let's get into counter knife and just show you some basic ideas. It may look a little like I'm oversimplifying it, but I'm not going to go into great detail. Uh, let's try to touch on the high points and then the rest you should be able to flesh out through your research and training. All right. Andy, come on in. Okay, there's two methods of, of dealing with the knife situation. Sometimes they're static and sometimes they're dynamic or what we call ballistic. So we'll start with static because it's the easiest to see, easiest to demonstrate. This is where a person should really learn how to pick up their actual disarms. Not how to knock him around and all this other stuff, he'll kill you for this but just what are the mechanics of getting this knife out of this guy's hand? That's the disarm. If I do something like this, this isn't a disarm. I'm just immobilizing the blade and hoping like hell that I can hold this guy down till help comes. That's also a method, but I'm actually talking about making him lose this weapon. That's what we're gonna talk about. So if he's in a static position here towards my neck, all I wanna do is move the target first. Before I move my hand, he could hurt me. So I'm gonna lean back and just capture that. Right there, I'm gonna take it out. From here, I could hit him or whatever, or just let it go, throw it aside. So this is just a simple whoa, and take that out. If you have your skills of your hand, in my sense, I'd throw them down to the ground from here. But if you haven't worked those type of skills, just be happy you got the knife. So from here, all I'm gonna do is pass and just lift, take it away. If I were to do that same thing from the inside, same lift, just take it away. So whichever side on a static move, whoa, get that away. You can also do this with your forearm, your leg. There's a lot of things, his leg. Just as I came through to here and took this out, I can take it off him like that. So it's a concept. It isn't just a technique. It is a whole series of techniques, if you know the concept. Okay, so static. Now, returning these. There's a section on, in the article on returning. If I do this, I don't have to return it. I'll throw it in the weeds and run away. While he's looking for his knife, I'll escape. If I return it, I'm gonna hurt it. A return works here to come back into him. A return works like a salute here and takes him back. Let's do the other side. All right, so what I did here is pass, bring my hand up like a salute, break free and return this. If I come up here, Pari, look, this pulls, not the knife, don't pull. Just go like this and return the blade. So the returning techniques go back at him. That's what you're trying to do. If I come into here like so, right back in the throat, that's number three. So one, two, three. That's how it works. So these are a specific way. Otherwise, it's just me taking the knife. That's just a disarm. It's not necessarily a return. So separate them. All right, now in the dynamic sense, he's going to be moving this blade. It's not static. He's actually attacking. Oh, 
He's trying to cut me up. So I've got to acquire this with the back of my forearm and pass him. Why the back of my forearm? Because I can sustain bad cuts here and remain functional. Here, I cannot. I will remain in the hospital or dead. So no underside cuts prevent damage and put the hands out like this. Now, cross body. If you cover like this and he cuts your hand, there's no way to get away from him. So it's a well-known fact that I engage cross body and when I do, when he goes slow, cut that arm, I pop it. See? When I meet him here, he sees ample opportunity to cut my forearm right there. But when he does, I pop it. So I have to meet the left side of his attack, his cross body with my left and the right here. And when I do this style of passing, I'm practicing. It would only occur one time or maybe two in the fight. Because when he were to do this, I'm just gonna blast that. I'm gonna come right in here, take him into a submission, hit the ground. You know, chain, chain grip, pain. So the idea of passing somebody right into an eye jab second hand capture and then locking him from here you know that's the idea this sort of thing so the two methods are static where he's like robbing you could be low could be high could have it up against your neck you know but he's not moving now get it on the other he is moving whatever he's doing could be a series of thrusts or cuts but you're going to meet any of those actions with cross-body connections and passing until you can come in here and get a piece. And from there, you then have your skills to say, I could return this and hurt him or throw it in the weeds and run. If you run, you don't have any courts and things like that to worry about. If you do this, you're going to have to do some splaining. So, just a word to the wise, if you're lucky enough to get the goddamn knife away, wow. You've done a miracle there. So now you're going to add to it by killing him? Or just throw it and run for you? You're supposed to run. Otherwise, you're cutting off a chunk of trouble. All right. We need to talk just a little bit more. And I'm going to get James in here to work on that. Andy, thanks so much. Okay. There's many things that we can do besides just meet this attack with the empty hands. Those of you that have seen my bandana series will know that we can use flexible weapons, a pet leash, a belt, a kerchief. Kerchief is just easiest to carry around with you. So, um, Andy, could I use your kerchief here? Perfect. Thank you, man. All right. So, simple kerchief. This is the basic action. I, I, I bait and make a, a loop. So, if he's coming towards me here, I knock this away with a pop. All right? I can also, as he's coming towards me, see, snap right there, acquire that. From here, take this out. Knife is now free. I have it in the kerchief between my gauntlet, my, my wrist protector. So, you need to start seeing how these flexible weapons, if he's striking, let's say, I want to do the pass. See, here's the cross body. I got the kerchief. So, I'm shooting here. Now, I take this around, see? Bring it back into the arm lock. Tie him up. From there I can either get the knife or drive him into the earth. So, the kerchief can be used as an accent to your skills. Now that isn't to say, if he's here, I couldn't have done the same motion and take him into an arm lock with my empty hand. I could. But the idea is to use the extra leverage gained by the kerchief as an explosive device. If you know the secret, like in my DVDs, that you're supposed to have something hard rolled up in here. When I do that right there, that'll break his hand. That's a big deterrent. As soon as I see him, hit, I've hit him. He's hurt, bang, and now I'm back in. Or if I'm baiting, I bait low or I bait high. I force him into a line. So don't just think that anytime some guy pulls a weapon like a knife that you just have to start doing empty hand. No. Get anything that you can touch to help this situation out. 
Let's say, uh, throw me that shield there, Andy, would you? Here, yeah, perfect, thank you. This is a type pad, type shield, but at the same time, it could be the briefcase or anything. If you're really worried about this, just take something, put it in your hand, and use it. If he hits me, I'm going to go, no. If he's trying to do thrusting triangle, whatever, no, bang, and hit him, and move. So, you could literally say, let's do the thrusting triangle, all punch, he'll thrust. So, James, thrust, there's my shield, all right? You're still going to check, see, because otherwise I'm going to hit you. So, with a shield, even if he pulled a big knife like that, if he's come at me with any bullshit here, it's just bang, pop. There, it's like, I'm going to take advantage. Oh my gosh, my briefcase is now cut. Big deal. I've got the guy and his knife. So, use a device, kerchief, flexible, solid, whatever, as part of your overall counter knife skills. Now, one other aspect. We t I just mentioned this at the beginning of this short video. Let's say somehow uh, if we come in, go ahead and do the numbers. Can you do the number seven takeaway for me, James? There we go. That's it. Just come right under and pull back. Just under and pull back. There. Good. All right. One more time. Good. Now, he didn't cut me. He just took my knife away. All right. He did a good disarm. So, when he, I'm hitting him, and he just took advantage of me and did that. See? Counter for counter knife. So, think about it. If he just comes at me, oh, counter knife. I don't have a knife. I've got to do something. Pass him. Strike him. Take this knife out and get out of here. That's the idea. I'm doing a counter to his knife. But if we both have knives, and I'm in that unlucky situation to where he goes, oh God, he's got my knife. I'm being drugged to this point. Don't hold on. Just release, take his, give him one in the kidney. That's what they get for touching your knife. So, in that sense, we have now give you an idea of counter for counter with knife. This way, whatever poison that James knew to do the poison, he's got me here. I go, I think I've got an antidote. Let go, quit being a strong guy because I must yield. If I hang on and James is strong and he pulls both knives, and what have I gained? Let him have it, yield. If he wants some bang, cover, make sure you're not hit. Hit him, come back. So this is the idea, yield. Just like this, when he swings at me, I don't go, stop you, SOB. Like in Tai Chi, the knife fighter will what? Yield. If this knife wants to go this way, I'm going to go, go that way. I will not oppose thee. So I want you to yield. This is what it's about. And that means when people go to take your stuff, this shouldn't be no tug of war. He should just let me have it. And with that rear hand, break my jaw. Bam. That's the idea. You, you don't sacrifice anything. You just move to the next level of engagement. You allow them to have their way through yielding. Because if not, as I said, I'll drag him onto the point. He could be badly hurt. I've got the control at this point. So remember to yield. This is part of the article. All right. Thank you, James. Thank you, Andy. And thank you at home. I'm James Keating, the Knife Coach, and I'll see you again.